Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. I've got some pretty exciting news, I think. I've come to the end of the sort of fabrication part of this build. I think, for the most part, it is finished. Um, this weekend, beginning of this weekend, I thought the same. And I thought I was going to just sort of look around everything, see, just to make sure one last look. And then I was going to start taking it apart. This weekend, and um, I went and got a sandblaster and some media, and I've already got the paint, and a buddy of mine is going to do the painting for me. So I thought what I could do is start taking this apart and um, get that ball rolling. But then it occurred to me there's a couple things that I've forgotten. Uh, one of which was my little parking brake thing. So this is a hydraulic parking brake, and what is supposed to happen is whenever you put your foot on the brake, and you push this little button down and the pressure in the lines on the brake calipers will hold that down and that's your parking brake and then to release it you just push the brakes again that pressure equalizes and the thing pops up so i needed to put that there i need to put that somewhere so this is the place that i come up with uh earlier ideas i was going to have it down here somewhere but not only is that a little bit weird and awkward but i've, all, I've got a uh, actuator now for the three point so that's not gonna work. But this just turned out to be kind of a cool place for that. And I made some brake lines. You can see the one there. And that one just kind of comes around and goes down into my master cylinder. The other thing I needed to do was mount my master cylinder reservoir. That's where that ended up. So that's kind of handy. You come up here and voila, there that is. So that's pretty cool. And then the other line, I can't really show it to you very well, but it goes down and around and ends up down there. That line took me three and a half hours to make. <laughs> because this bend right here, that one, I bent that the wrong way four times in a row. I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but I bent that four times in a row. It's still not exactly how I would like it. Uh, and I may, there may be some massaging that I can do now that everything's all connected, but it is there. I haven't bothered to bleed these brakes yet because I just have to take them apart and then I'd have brake fluid going everywhere and it'd make a mess. So i um, not going to do that. So anyway, reservoir is there. The lines, I've got all my hard lines run. Got my pressure switch or my uh, parking brake. And then I also needed a way to cover this. I had originally thought that maybe I'd just put a flat plate across there and then have this top link sort of as a, a feature, if you will. But then I remembered that I've got this piece, which is from the original Cub Cadet. And so I just kind of trimmed it to fit. Oops, sorry. I kind of trimmed it to fit. I ended up narrowing it about an inch or so right through the middle. And there was like a hole right here. I don't know exactly what the hole was for. Maybe a lever or something. I don't know. But there was a hole right there. But So I filled in that hole and then uh, dug a hole out for that parking brake uh, button. Now, I, I kind of got the location of that button wrong. It was kind of a swag. I tried to measure it a little bit and figure out where it goes, but I ended up being wrong by a little bit. So I had to wallow out that hole some, but it doesn't matter. Nobody will know or care. The other part is the three-point. I got all this finished. I needed to uh, make, a, make this panel back here. Make that panel back there. Yeah, that's quarter-inch steel, and I'm... Uh, it's just one solid piece, and then these are these I just bent uh, by hand. So on the other side of this piece, I just scored it with my cutoff wheel through more than you know, till there was about a sixteenth of an inch gap left, and then I cut some some all the way through so I could bend it by hand, and then just sort of bent it back, and you know there it is, and then put these top plates on for the top link, and welded on the. Uh, the receiver hitch and this is going to be where my lawnmower connects to um, I've got this welded on the other side too so it's welded on it's welded on both so it's not going anywhere and I don't think I'm going to lift anything put anything on the back of here that's heavy enough to damage that without damaging the axles or something so that's no big deal uh, on the back side of this you can't you can't see it but on the back side of this I've got a little triangle so this is kind of gusseted comes down to about right here so that's gusseted right in the middle so if there's anything heavy on here which again there's not going to be anything heavy enough on there to to bend that quarter inch steel 
um, it'll take it. Yep, so that's pretty cool. And I think the three-point looks just fantastic. It looks like it's supposed to be there, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, so that's not quite as low as it can go. I've got this jack in there, so it's kind of uh, in the way a little bit. But I'll show you how, how fast it goes. And uh, so I've just got all my switches over here. And this is my up-down switch. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's not light speed. But, you know, it goes up. It goes up there pretty good. And it stops internally. Uh, there's some limit switches inside of the actuator, and that's just how that that's how that works. And it's strong too. It can it can easily pick me up, um, no problem. But uh, yeah, and then yeah, and then it's on the way down. I'm kind of having to push this down with my foot because this top link is uh, very stiff. Let's say, and it actually provides quite a lot of resistance against the. Um, the, the little tow bar going down but yeah so that's pretty neat and speaking of little eyes that are difficult to move this one right here is man is it stuck it's really 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 hard to move uh i had it in a vice and it, i couldn't i just couldn't get it to turn um i finally put it on the tractor and had this bar sticking out of it and put my full weight into it and i finally got it to move enough so that i could actually get this this little bar back in here but so you know i thought well this is silly i'll uh the other one's pretty stuck too but not as bad so i thought i'll just go to my friend amazon and order up some replacement ends so i did and i got them and here they are so they're a little bit fatter um sort of going left to right they're a little bit fatter and a little bit thicker uh heavier duty i guess um so if i put them on there it'll look weird but the problem really is is that this is just as stuck as the other ones so that's annoying that's 30 bucks down the drain i'm not sure what i did with the the plastic cover for, for the one that i just showed you so i don't even know if i'll be able to return them i might be able to i don't know whatever maybe i'll just hang on to them and use them for some other project maybe yeah of course that's what i'm going to do uh let's see what else so that's uh that's pretty awesome there covered all that stuff the other thing i needed to do was uh, find a place for my little power takeoff output. Um, so that, that's where, you know, I'll have a cable and it goes in there and it'll run whatever I've got going in the back. A, a tiller or a uh, wood chipper. <laughs> yeah, wood chipper. By the way, my fingers are all healed up. Uh, wood chipper or lawnmower or whatever. Um, generator, lights, who knows. Uh, or inverter, lights. So that's where that is maybe going to go. The other option is is that I could put it, flip this around and put it on the bottom. And that would kind of look a little bit nicer and get it out of the way. But then the then the cable run might end up being a problem with this top link, which I don't know, which may or may not actually be there, um, depending on the implement. So probably just gonna keep it there and it'll be under the seat. And that'll be good enough. Uh, the only issue with that is if I ever did need to remove uh, this back part of the body. And I mean, I just have to undo those screws and and fish it through, um, you know, just get it out of the way. But it's that is that really not that big of a deal, to be honest. So that's probably where that's going to end up being. I had a friend uh, got on his 3D printer and he made me some little cable um, connectors. So that one will probably go right there. I've also got another one of these little cable clamps, and I'm not, I really don't know how I'm going to do this. How I'm going to run these wires yet. Um, but they're are these cables, but they're going to have to go down and then, uh, there's a lot going on over there. There's an actuator in the back. There's the, that link that swivels. There's all this steering stuff right there. There's a drive shaft and those cables need to go across through here, uh, without hitting any of that stuff. And they need to somehow be held in place so that they don't end up somewhere they don't need to be. Uh, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue how I'm going to do this. So, anyway. But, uh, that's all going to come during the disassembly. In fact, the disassembly, I've made a little list of stuff I need to do. And, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. So, the, uh, and I just, this is in no, no important thing, but, uh, round off the bottom pivot. So, so that's just a, you know, solid chunk of flat bar on both sides. I want to kind of 
knock those corners off and smooth it off, round it off a little bit, make it look kind of nicer. Uh, there's all kinds of unused holes in the frame, like all these holes right there. I just want to get rid of them. I'm just going to weld them shut. Uh, it just, it just kind of clean it up a little bit. I got to be careful not to weld shut ones that I need, so I'll mark them somehow. But yeah, that one and all these other ones, I can just, I can just close them up. I've already kind of started doing that a little bit, but um, yeah. The uh, shunt, the shunt is underneath the radiator up in front, and it's currently the only thing I think that could possibly suffer from uh, what um, water, some water damage or whatever. So I think I'm just going to ladder that thing up with some epoxy so that uh, water can't get into anything that's vital. Well, the steering plate a lot. And so the steering plate, if you remember, is where the front of the linear actuator mounts for the, um, let me get this off here. This is the front where the linear actuator mounts for the three point. And that's this bar right here under the wires. And it just, at the moment, I just got it kind of tacked on the sides, but I'll weld that solid across the top. And then once all this crap is not in there anymore, I'll weld it solid on the bottom. Uh, same over on this side, I'll weld it solid on the top and the bottom. But I need to reinforce this plate. This plate's where it welds to, but I need to reinforce the mount of this plate to the frame because at the moment it's just kind of um, just, just welded right along the top a little bit. So underneath here, there's a nice gap that I can have this thing flipped upside down and I can weld that gap and that'll get this solid to the frame. And then I may even put some like little gussets, um, some little triangle pieces in there just to tie it into the frame better to make sure that if I do lift something heavy, it doesn't um, rip my steering out. That would be tragic. You do that. Then, um, oh, one thing that I could do actually before taking this, well, I need to, I want to uh, make some sort of protective covers for these water pipes. They're pretty vulnerable, and I want to make some sort of a some sort of a guard that comes down and around. I'm not really sure how to do that. I think that'd be a lot easier once once all this stuff is empty and I've got this thing flipped upside down. I can take a closer look and and uh, not weld upside down. But I want to do that. And let's see what else. Well, the caliper mounts, yeah, the, the bottom parts of these caliper mounts, oops, you can't see it. Yeah, the bottom parts of those mounts, they're just sort of tacked together. I don't have those welded up, gotta do that. And the controller chill plate RTV, yeah. So I've had this, um, so this is the controller, this is the part of the controller, and then on the other side of here is the chill plate. That's where all the coolant runs through. There needs to be some RTV between those two so that they don't leak. Uh, RTV, the rear gearbox cover, yeah, that's where the, um, the, uh, lift arms for the three point, um, I made a new thicker plate and I need to put RTV on there and two wires for fog lights, two more wires for fog lights. I had a thought that maybe one of these days, uh, if I ever put something heavier on front, I'd like to put a, uh, one of those DR mower brush mowers. Uh, normally it's like two handles and you got driven wheels and you can steer it and, you know, put, just plow your way through, you know, thick brush, um, little saplings and stuff. I'd like to mount one of those up here and short of, I'm not really sure how it would raise, raise and lower it, uh, but a, a linear actuator at some point may be kind of nice to have up here. And if that's the case, then I need a way to actuate the actuator. Um, like I showed you on the last video that this rear actuator has a little relay up underneath of here. Now what I could do, I could make this a double, I could make this work either one of them. I could put a little, a little, uh, a little rotary switch that kind of looks like this one. I could put one over here and just have, but it'll be an on off. And what it would do is it would, um, complete the circuit to either, operate the rear PTA or the rear actuator or the front actuator. So if I wanted to do three point hitch stuff, then I would flip it to rear and then the up and down would make it that work. But if I wanted to do front uh, actuator stuff, then I'd flip it to front and it would send the power to the front. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to run two wires up there um, and just have them terminate back here somewhere. The problem, not really problem. I've, I've sort of run out of, um, 
spaces in these connectors. I think I may have one one more in here somewhere that I could use because uh, I've got the negative. Yeah, I've got the negative wire from the uh, fog lights coming up through here, and then the switch completes the circuit for the negative. Uh, the positive wire for the fog lights just comes up and goes directly into the fuse box. So if I um, if I run two more wires, then I'll have to figure out uh, where my spare is and then steal the one of these wires. There's two wires in this harness that are unused. So I could either repurpose the wires going to the fog lights uh, to do that, or I could run two new wires entirely and have a different connector for the actuator. But what will probably happen is I'll just run two new wires up there and then just like coil them up and set them aside for, you know, future if I decide to do that for future bill. Yeah, so I want to do that. And then also I need to come through and tidy up this wiring harness. There's wires that I've run, um, like some of these wires, some of these wires here. I did these wires after... I had all this back together. I had all this apart so that I could do my initial wiring harness. Then once I put all this stuff back together, there were certain wires that I needed to run up there. So they're not really in the harness. So I need to sort of tie them together and make that uh, nicer and come up with some locations for you know more clamps for the rest of the wiring harness. I need to do that too. But otherwise, <laughs> but otherwise I think it's done. And also need to, I need to weld this up. I need to weld this up. I don't really like how that looks. Now I could make a half decent weld over there, and if if the weld got screwed up, I could just kind of grind and smooth it and make it look all right. But um, I think I'd kind of, I'd like to take some material out of this, like cut this in half and narrow it a little bit, and then just butt weld this so it'd be flush against the frame, so the frame would effectively, you know, just kind of do like that. I think that would look nicer. I realized that nobody will give a damn <laughs> if I just did it like that. If I just ran a weld, even if it wasn't a beautiful weld and then just painted over it, nobody's going to care. But I kind of care. So anyway, that is that is it. And the other thing I'm going to need to do as I'm taking this apart is document it. Because this is Tetris. Uh, this is high-level Tetris. Getting all this crap to fit in here. And... Uh, work <laughs> so <laughs> getting it apart will be easy getting it back together is going to be a an issue i need to find a seat also because uh if you remember oh yeah that's the other thing i did so i didn't really know how i was going to solve the problem of these arms clashing with the seat pant the seat base um i thought about maybe just cutting it here and then folding it down but then i thought well why don't i just notch it out where it goes and well that's what i did and that works just fine but the these lift arms still come up and hit the back of the seat. Uh, I've got some little spacers here that I'm going to put between the, these springs and the seat base that'll kind of lift the seat up a little bit, but I think it's still going to hit some. And um, yeah, so I mean that just may be how it is. If they're all if the if the three points lifted up all the way, then you know, it's hitting the back of the seat and that's, you know, that's probably okay. But in doing all of this figuring out, I found out that the bottom of this seat base is all rusted and cracked and broken. So I need a new seat. So if anybody knows where to get a, a new seat, you can get them on eBay, but they're like $150. I don't really want to spend $150 on a seat, but honestly, at this point, what's $150? Uh, well, it's $150. That's what. So anyway, that is it for this time. I uh, appreciate you all sticking through, sticking with me through all of this. We're getting real close to having a, uh, a finished vehicle. I think it's going to look fantastic when it's all done and painted. And, uh, well, until next time, thanks for watching.